Having looked at direct lighting, let's take a look at environmental lighting. Environmental lighting is hugely important in most scenes, and it represents the light coming from the sky, generally the sky, not just the sun, or any light coming from or scattered by objects outside of what you have present in your scene. The lighting that you get within a forest is going to look very different to the lighting that you get within a city, and equally as different from the light you would get inside a building. And environmental lighting models the kind of light environment that you would get apart from the direct light within your scene. So let's set up this scene so that we isolate the environmental lighting. So first of all, I'm going to turn off ambient and I'm going to delete the light in the scene. And we're going to make our usual adjustments of gamma correction and reduction of tile size. Now, at the moment, because we've got no lights in the scene, if I do a render, we just get a black image. So we need to do two things to enable environmental lighting or skylighting. We need to turn on skylight under global illumination, and we need to provide a source for that. Now the source can be set up in the scene tab, so we'll select scene, and it can be set up in one of two places, either atmosphere, where the main one to use is realistic sky. Sky setting here is a previous version that was available in older versions of Carrera and really has been superseded by realistic sky. And in here, you can edit the position of the sun and various other parameters. Other sources for environment light are available in the background. So I'll just turn off realistic sky for now and have a look at the options within background. Just a word in terms of the difference between background and backdrop. If I enable the production frame by show production frame here, backdrop, if you load an image, then that will be scaled to fit the area within the production frame. With background, it effectively wraps the image 360 degrees around your scene using a spherical mapping, which is why HDRI images, high dynamic range images, and other maps which are intended for that use a spherical mapping. The simplest option to use on the background is color. And if I just turn that to white, you'll see that that can give us quite a good lighting effect. Again, control R, and we're getting nice soft lighting and an even appearance, a white background and white reflected in the reflective sphere here. And that can be quite an effective light source, particularly combined with a little bit of direct light as well. Second option is by gradient, which has a gradient from the start sky to end sky, which are selectable colors and start ground to end ground. And you can select those colors to anything you like and also move the horizon line up and down to anything you like. If we just do a quick render on that, you can see that background here consists of the ground colors, but most of the actual illumination on top here is from the sky colors. And you can see both of those reflected in the reflective sphere. You can use a map for the background, but if you just use a normal map, such as a JPEG or other normal image files, it doesn't produce any lighting information. And so the result can be a fairly flat result with little contrast. The difference between those and HDRI images is that HDRI images have lighting information embedded into them. So it can model the environment, not only how it looks, but how it illuminates the object. And these produce the best results. So if I load an image, I'll go into pictures, and I've got quite a number of HDRI images in this particular folder here, which I've labeled IBL. And I'm going to use one from DOSH Design that is included in the Carrera distribution called DOSH HDRI Extreme High Res. This is quite a large file, so I'm going to allow a little bit of time for it to load, but it does produce very good results. I'm going to adjust the field of view as well so that we get some more of the background. Now, if I render this, you can see that we're getting the background image and also quite nice lighting on here. But the background image is quite pale. Now, most HDRI images can be used as they are and will produce the correct results. But because this particular image was included in the Carrera distribution and specifically for use with Carrera, it's actually had a gamma adjustment made to it. And we're also putting gamma correction on the final image, which means that this is being gammaed twice, which is why it's so pale. So what we need to do is to degamma this particular image. And I'll go through the process with you. So I'll go into Photoshop and load that particular image. Again, I'm going to navigate to the correct folder and load that in. So here we are in Photoshop with the DOSH HDRI Extreme High Res image loaded. And you can see even here, it's looking very pale and washed out. 
and without the sort of contrast that you would expect of an HDRI image. You can also see that the preview is scaled to 16.7%. This is in fact a very high resolution image and if we check the image size, we can see that it's actually over 6,000 by 3,000 pixels in size. And there's a good reason for using very high resolution images. When used as a background, you're only actually seeing a small portion of the background image depending on your field of view within Carrera. So if the field of view covers more than a sixth of the total width of this, and you're rendering at a thousand pixels width in Carrera, then you're going to get some sort of pixelation of the background. So a minimum size for background that's going to be in focus is something like 4,000 by 2,000, but 6,000 by 3 or 8,000 by 4,000 is even better to ensure that you reduce any jaggies or blurred appearance of the background. You can actually use this to your advantage by using a lower resolution background. You can produce a subtle depth of field effect with the background slightly out of focus or even have it very low resolution and have a completely blurred background. It doesn't really affect the lighting the background applies to your model but it does affect how it looks on the background image. And you can experiment with that and produce some different effects. But let's look at the gamma correction. And if we go to image, adjustments, and exposure, then that calls up this dialog box. And you can see there is a setting for gamma included with it. Because we're degammering it, you might need to think that you want the inverse of 2.2. But in this case, if you put 2.2 in here, then that produces the gamma correction that we need. So I'm just going to accept that and it will calculate the gamma correction and apply it to the detailed high resolution image. If you ever need to go in the opposite direction, if you've got an image that doesn't have gamma that you want to apply it, then the inverse factor that you need is 0 0.4545. But in this case, 2.2 gives us the contrast and the brightness that we'd expect to see in this particular image. So now we can save that degammed version for use as a Carrera background, which I've already done. So if we go back to Carrera, I can just load a degammed version of that. And now if we go into the render room and render that again, you can see now that the background seems to fit in much better and it's providing nice soft illumination of these particular spheres here. In addition to the few HDRI images that are included in Carrera, there are a number of sources of free or low cost HDRI images, including things like HDRI Mill, which has a number of free samples available. SIBL images from HDRI Labs, and they're also free. A number of packs available from Dimension Theory and others available at DAS 3D at quite low prices. If the lighting that you're getting from your image isn't correct, then you can adjust the intensity here, and that will adjust the intensity of the lighting without changing the intensity of the background. Alternatively, you can change the intensity here, which will change the intensity of the lighting and the look of the background. So if I say put that to 200, we're going to get a brighter version, both in terms of the background and the lighting available within the scene. I'm going to use another image for the next demonstration. I'll use one of the sRGB images, and I'm going to use one called Old Industrial Hall. Now with sRGB, you quite often find that you've got multiple examples of an HDRI file. If you just want the lighting from it and aren't too bothered about the background, then you can use the smaller version of the two, or that can produce nice out of focus effects in the background. Now that one's 20 meg and that one's 164 kilobytes. So the 20 meg one is the one that we want for high detail, which will give us more detail in the background. I'm just gonna pull out of that scene a little bit. And this is quite a dark environment. You can see that we're still getting quite a lot of illumination within this scene. And that's coming in through the lights that you can see reflected or the windows that you can see reflected in the reflective ball here. This is a good example of how gamma correction is making this look correct. If I take gamma correction off and re-render, you can see the scene gets very dark and we lose a lot of the details. It's much too high a contrast and the lighting isn't correct. But with gamma correction, it looks far, far better. Now, if you've got your scene set up, but you want to rotate the background, there isn't actually an option to do that within Carrera. You can see there is a rotation option, but what that does is to rotate the image 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees. 
So in fact, if we do 180, it turns the view upside down within the scene. This is actually the ceiling and this is the floor. And that's not what we want when we rotate the image. So if you can't rotate the background, you can rotate everything else against the background. If I drag down to the right on here, you can select everything and then group it by pressing Control G. If I go to the top view, and again, I'll just use the magnifying glass here and Control click to zoom out. You can see I've also grouped the camera in with this and you can group any lights in with it as well. You can then rotate the scene, which will rotate everything against the background. Then everything will stay the same apart from the background. So if you need to rotate the background, that's a simple way to do it. Group everything in the scene and then rotate that group. In general, a combination of HDRI lighting and maybe just one direct light can produce excellent results for very realistic lighting. If you have a completely closed environment, like a room setting, or the scene is in deep night or deep space, then you probably don't need skylight. But in most other environments, you do. And I hope this particular section has given you an idea of the power and the realism that you can generate from environmental lighting and skylighting within Carrera.